Have you ever wondered why some families eat together and never take lightly the opportunity to share a meal, whether they're eating out or in the comfort of their homes? It's because a whole lot can happen when people dine together. Today, you're going to hear the story of a family that now runs a multi-billion naira business. But it all began from a light-hearted conversation at the dining table. I'm Kaya De Alayade. Welcome to BOI Weekly. Banroot Rolls Nigeria Limited, a subsidiary of Banroot Enterprises Limited, was commissioned in June 2008 to manufacture various kinds of tissue paper products for the Nigerian market and the West African subregion. Until 2012, when it ventured into manufacturing, Banrit Enterprises Limited engaged in wholesale, distribution and general merchandising of a wide variety of consumer goods and sundry businesses. <music> Leading on sophisticated technology, Banrit Rolls caters for the huge demand of high-quality hygiene products in the various socio-economic categories of the Nigerian market. Today, what began as a family trading business now proudly produces high-quality toilet rolls, kitchen rolls, serviettes, pocket tissue, facial tissue, box tissue and other multi-purpose napkins, setting the industry benchmark for excellent hygiene products. With a vision to become the number one homegrown tissue manufacturer in Nigeria, Banroot sought partnership with the Bank of Industry early, and repeatedly so, a decision that has put them way ahead of the pack in less than 15 years. Although Banroot's long-standing partnership with the Bank of Industry has now become a reference point, the BOI state manager in Abuja, Mrs. Ogo Akabogu, who's been part of the engagement from day one, admits that the partnership wasn't exactly rosy at the beginning because BOI needed to do its own due diligence to prove the concept. Beirut started here in Abuja and um, we established first contact with them in the year 2012. And the process began from there. They expressed their interest in accessing BOI financing. Having set up the factory already in the industrial area of Idu in Abuja. And when they approached us, it was uh, not a very smooth beginning we had as they are just trying their hands in this area of business of tissue manufacturing paper rolls and the rest of it we are also we were also cautious that they have what it takes to be able to succeed in this business and that is why at that place it was a, like a relationship that everybody is trying everybody to see what are the things you have that you're coming on board with that will make sure that this business that as viable as it sounded, will be profitable and sustainable. But eventually, when they understood us, and we took our time to also understand the business they do, and they want to embark on, the drive and the passion of the chief promoter sealed the deal for us. We were sure that he was committed to this project, and we couldn't let him rest from then on. We continued pushing until about 2013 when eventually we dispersed the first loan to them and the relationship has been blissful ever since. So why exactly did the Bank of Industry invest in Banroot? We were looking at import substitution. 
prior to that moment, we've had tissue, papers, paper rolls everywhere in our shelves, but majority were imported. Not very many people were encouraged to go into production. And BOI being the development financial institution that it is, focused on such, decided that we must see that this company succeeds. Already the market is there. It may not be very competitive at that stage. The profit may be very thin at that stage because of the effect of importation of tissue rolls into the country. However, their emergence into the scene with other manufacturers has proven that if we put our minds to it and the necessary support and infrastructural support are given to investors, we will be able to make sure that Nigerian products dominate our shelves. Even though the man who was there at the beginning, Prince Samson Atayra, chairman and chief executive, is not available to tell the story himself, his daughter, Mrs. Adebola Atayra Adefila, currently serves as the chief operating officer. It's clear she not only knows the story, she very well understands the plot. So, Barrett is a family business, and we've been um, we've been existing as a family business for more than two decades now, um, and we've you know tried our hands on a lot of businesses, importation, trading, um, a little bit of real estate haulage, and now manufacturing. The manufacturing arm is close to fourteen years now. And I'll say, I was born into a family of business. So business is always what I've always known, and that's always what I've always seen um, in the family. So it came naturally to me to just know that business was something I was going to do. Um, but the, for the manufacturing, um, it started off as a very, very informal you know, discussion in the, in the family, where we're at, I think it was on our dining table, and at the time, the president, I think it was President Olusha Gombasajo, who was in power at the time, and he had placed a ban on few items. And my brother walked up to me. At the time, I was on the importation side of the business, importation and trading. And my brother walked up to me and said, don't you think you should take the business of the family a notch higher? And I was like, you know, a notch higher how? I wasn't thinking manufacturing at all. And I was like, I think you should just stop this thing about bringing um, other people's goods and just coming to dump here and you're selling. He said it in a, in a bit of a condescending manner that looks like, hey, are you saying I'm joking here or we're not doing serious business here? And he was like, no, I just think we've done this for a while. I think it's time for you to do something else. And while we're talking, and he was like, have we even talked about manufacturing? And I was like, manufacturing? It didn't occur to me that, I, I didn't even think about it. And while we're um, deliberating on that and just still having just a very informal conversation, um, he said, okay, how about toothpick? You know, um, there's, a ban on, there's a ban list at the moment, so why don't we just check the list and see what can work? So he said toothpick. I think my other brother said um, juice or something. And while we were talking, my mom walked into the conversation and said, how about tissue paper? And at that time, it just sounded like, you know, like light bulb, you know, when somebody comes in and says something and all the other ideas are just thrown out of the window, like, oh, tissue paper makes sense, okay, it doesn't expire, um, everybody needs it as a consumable, blah, blah, blah. So we started going on and on about the advantages of running that kind of business. And, but again, funding, how are we going to start? We don't even know anything about manufacturing, how we're, where we're going to start from. And that's how we started and we, we pitched it to our dad. And while we were talking to him and we were like, okay, we're thinking of this idea of manufacturing. And he just went like, where am I going to get that kind of money from? And I think to discourage us, to discourage us, he said, um, okay, go and do a feasibility study of what it would take to run a tissue paper um, company. And within two days, my brother and I came back 
we told him, gave him the population of Nigeria, told him, you know, how many people will use this and blah, 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 where you could get the machines. We saw some machines in South Africa. You know, we just gone to just do our findings, of course, on, on the internet. And then he took us, he said to take us serious, like, this guy is really, really serious. It's more or less like, they're not joking, right? And we started researching. We started researching for, you know, where to get the machines and all of that. We got the machines. We started with Chinese machines. We got the machines and, you know, 14 years down the line, we're here. Once Banruk decided to go in the direction of tissue paper conversion and manufacturing, there was no looking back. They began developing very high quality and interesting line of products that people can use every day and everywhere. Um, so Banru Trolls Nigeria Limited is a manufacturing um, company that produces tissue paper. Um, we have our Prince Toilet Roll, the Root Supreme Toilet Roll. We have the Vicky Toilet Roll. We have the Vicky Kitchen Roll. We have the Vivian um, Savia Napkin, the Vicky Facial Box, and um, the Multipurpose Cloth as well. The Multipurpose Cloth is a, is a new one, um, but we started right from the get-go with the Mod Purpose Cloth. That's the, it's new, I mean, when it comes to Nigeria environment. Um, we're the only ones producing that um, kind of product in the whole of, you know, Nigeria. And I think, I dare say in Africa, it's a washable cloth. You get to wash it like almost 10, 15 times before you dispose of it. Um, so that's that about our product um, profile. We're all about hygiene and when we, when to start the business, we thought to ourselves that we wanted to do something premium, something good. We, of course, there were other tissue papers in the market. We didn't want to have a low graded um, quality. So we wanted a situation where we're able to um, give you good product that is at par with international brands. So that's how, that's why you find that most of our products are premium. They're virgin paper. It's 100% virgin paper. And um, we have a few recycled now because after a while, the market started to demand from us some recycled brands. So we have a few recycled. We have um, the Nimi Economy and the Kiki Plus. Those are our recycled um, products. This is our, one of our primary raw material. This is a virgin product, it's, an, it's imported as well. It's about um, 700 kg, kilogram of tissue wrapped here. So the entire tissue process starts from here. This particular material is for tissue production. What we do here, we convert it to the regular toilet paper you see in the market. The process starts from here, then it goes to the machine, part by part, we unwind it, process it, cut it, we package it to so the main market. So the process starts from the machine here. This machine is a fully automated machine. It's called Extra 5 machine. This machine runs on 350 meters per minute. From that, we process it to the Luxor machine. What it does, it cuts the tissue to different sizes that we want to cut. Now there's another machine externally that rolls the core, the inner tip of the tissue paper, and sends it automatically to the rewinder all these things are processed automatically. Then after, we send it to another machine, the whole line of process, the Casmatic Rwanda machine that wraps the tissue and checks it out to the finishing. From that process, our tissue is ready for the market after checks from the quality control unit. Once it's tested and confirmed okay, it's ready to go to the market. So it's a whole line of process from one machine to another. The Rwanda does a lot of things from embossing to lamination to so many processes before we get to the finishing and everything is done under standard regulations. Are you an SME operator in Nigeria? Do you want to upskill and learn proactive strategies that would help drive your business forward, especially during this COVID period? Then you need to register for the 2021 SME Academy. Leading consumer goods company Procter & Gamble P&G in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment FMITI and the Bank of Industry BOI is set to hold a virtual SME Academy program. This sophomore edition will take place virtually on Friday by February 
12, 2021 by 10 a.m. This program will train over 300 SME operators on basic business skills to improve their standards, sustain their business, and facilitate their integration into global value chains. Participants are expected to meet the following criteria. Must be duly registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC. Must operate within one of these sectors, a Greek, food, solid minerals processing, light manufacturing, healthcare, ICT and engineering. Must have been operating for a minimum of three years. Must have good credit history. Equal opportunities for women and youth within the company. If you ticked all the checklists, then the SME Academy is for you. To register, visit www.boi.ng. Click on the SME Academy link on the page and follow the registration prompt. A confirmation will be sent to you immediately and successful registrants will receive an invitation with login link few days to the event. We promise you an insightful and experiential session. This information is brought to you by Procter & Gamble Nigeria in partnership with Bank of Industry and the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, FMITR. The Bank of Industry has invested in Banroot Rolls Nigeria Limited no fewer than four times in the last eight years or less, in a sum hovering around a billion naira. At each stage of intervention, the Bank of Industry has deployed tailor-made support from its bouquet of intervention funds, pushing them to the zenith of the industry. We've been on this journey with them and they keep accessing financing over multiple times right now. And they have accessed the Bank of Industry loan under the BOI funding. They have also accessed the African Development Bank funding, which is a fund that we are managing from the African Development Bank. So it, was, it came cheaper and at that point, they required that financing, and we had to do that to also support their business further. So three times they have access from Bank of Industries funding and then from the ADB funding. So those are the funds they have access. Of course, they've also accessed our working capital. Like you mentioned, their raw materials come from abroad, so they have to import, and then we've been supporting. In the last 14 years of operation at Banroot Rolls Nigeria Limited, it's been a mixed bag of cloudy days and sunshine, and the Bank of Industry has remained there through the thick and thin, and the results speak volumes. From increased production and distribution capacity to job creation. So there are times when, as an entrepreneur on a journey, right, there are days, it's a pop period of all sorts. You know, there are days when you feel like, gosh, I got into the right game. And there are days when you just feel like, who sent me here? <laughs> what was I thinking? Why did I do this? Right? Um, so starting Banroot, um, now Banroot the manufacturing arm, we started off with what we could afford. Of course, we couldn't afford the kind of machines you see on the factory floor today. So we started with the basic. We just wanted to just, you know, we, when we started, we just had the north in mind. It was just more or less Abuja and environs. We we're not even thinking southwest. We we're not thinking the east. We were just like, let's start in our backyard and just start however we can start. So we started with the, with the basic um, Chinese machines. And we were able to run that for the first five years of the business. Getting to the fifth year of the business, we started to realize that we needed to upgrade our machines. Our machines need to be more techy, you know, more advanced, because what we could, um, our production then wasn't able to cater for the demand. And this was a business, this was a space or a market where you already had, you already, you had big players already, and coming in there, you didn't think you were going to be that accepted. You know, we thought of only the north. We said, okay, you know what, we're going to produce only for Abuja and Embarrows. But after a while, two, three, four, five years down the line, other states started to demand for the products. And that was when we realized, okay, you know what, we need to upgrade our machines. And of course, upgrading the machine cost an arm and a leg. And we knew that the next thing to do was to go um, loan shopping. 
And while loan shopping, we found out that BOI was going, just going to be the next um, favorable place to go to. And we got, we got a loan from BOI to upgrade our machines. We were able to upgrade. And after the upgrade, it, didn't take, it took us less than three years to um, be available nationwide. So as we speak, we have distributors in all the 36 states of the Federation. There are some states where you have two, three distributors. Some have four. Some have seven distributors, depending on how large um, the state is. I'll say, when we started out in the business, let's even start from the staff strength. We had a staff strength of about 35 people. Um, by the time we're going to um, get the loan from Bank of Industry, after getting the loan from Bank of Industry, we installed the machines and we started to use our machines. Our market reach increased from seven states to 18, like the first, the first um, tranche of um, loan that we got from Bank of Industry. We moved from seven to 18 in less than two years of getting the loan. And I'll give you um, figures. So those, but let me say for a particular product, there's a particular product that we, we were, before the loan, we were producing maybe 5,000 bundles in a month. But by the time we got the loan, we got one machine that was producing 19,000 bundles a month. Meaning you're now having extra 14,000 bundles. So you have a good problem, which is sales. So how do you now market the extra 14 bundles? But um, it will shock you that within six, eight, nine months, with that space, we're able to cover. So much that we, we, we had to buy two more of that machine. So presently, we're doing over 50,000 bundles of that particular product in the space of seven years. So that's growth on the part of you know, production output, right? Um, on the part of um, um, staff strength, at the moment, so we started up with about 35 people. Um, at the moment, we're about 273 people. Effective distribution is key to the tissue paper business and Banroot runs an effective and robust web of distribution system across the country. What's more, their doors are wide open to absorb more qualified distributors. We have um, about 45 distributors and when I say 45, they are spread across the regions. We have distributors in southeast, we have in the south south, we have in north central, we have in the southwest, and we have in uh, FCT. And just like I said before, distributors, it depends on the demand. Like in places, there are some states where you can actually have, in a state, you can actually have more than one like places like Port Harcourt, where we have high demand of our products, places like Worry, then there are places where you can, because of the size of the market, you can't have more than one to give them room to, to turn over quickly. We, we communicate to the public the need for distributorship. And when any prospective uh, indicates interest. We have a sales rep almost in all over the states. So what we do is to send a representative to go and you know, meet up with the distributor. We assess the capacity of the distributor. We check the storage capacity. We check the distribution channel because we, we expect you to have space to store because our product is, is voluminous. Uh, so we expect you to have a storage space, then we expect you to have at least your own channel of distribution. There are, it will get to a stage where we come in, but you know, initially we expect you to already have your channel of distribution. We expect you to at least have a van and have some sales representatives that help to distribute. Many local companies have taken shots at succession planning, especially on the family level, but have failed at it. Not so with Banrood. Mrs. Adebola Tairo Adefila has been functioning in the capacity of Chief Operating Officer of the company in the last three years. So you know, these things about um, family business and coming at a level where uh, you just come and just 
come to take the office of the CEO of the CEO. It's not the case in my own situation. Um, I started from the bottom. And I think that's why we are still where we are today. Um, and I think that's why I know so much about what we're into. I started as a marketer in Banroot. So it was, I grew through the, you know, through the rope, through the ranks. And um, so taking the office of the COO, I would say came in naturally. Um, it was just the next thing for me. It was just the next level. I'd um, worked in the marketing department. Um, I'd worked as a general manager at some point. I, I think I wrote this in my book, Profit, where I said, you don't gift your business to your child. It's not a gift. Your child must work it. You must allow that child to work it. If, if possible, allow the child to even have a, like an outside experience from a different company. That will be all on BOI Weekly for today. Many thanks for watching. If your business is at that point where it needs to go to the next level, do not hesitate to reach out to the Bank of Industry. For starters, visit any of their branches closest to you or log on to their website at boi.ng. Feel free to tweet at me at K-A-Y Alliance for further inquiries. And remember, you can watch previous editions of the program on youtube.com by typing BOI Weekly in the search area. And there you go. I'm Kaede Alliance. Bye now.